Hi everyone, uh, in this series of sessions, we are trying to answer all your questions that you have posted on our YouTube videos um, or on LinkedIn pages. We also run our mentorship program so students do reach out to us. So we are trying to bring some question and answer series where we have uh, Saurabh who will help us answer uh, today's question. So today's question um, is about the DevOps and cloud industry in general. Like uh, what we have seen students when they are trying to learn DevOps and cloud, they face a lot of common challenges which apply to a lot of different roles, whether you are architect or a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer. So what those challenges are and how to mitigate around it, how to solve those uh, basic challenges that pretty much everybody uh, faces. So sorry. Yep. Thank you, Sandeep, for the question. So, see, uh, we have been running this mentorship program for probably close to a year now. Uh, we have faced, seen lots of students. So, there are three categories of students that we get. So, if you talk about in terms of your experience, so we get freshers or up to up to three years of experience. Then we have got three to 10, 12 years of experience for people who want to change their career. After that, we have got around, let's say, 12 years plus, and I would categorize them as uh, pretty senior people. So everybody comes with their own aspirations. Some people come here to change their job. Some people come here to do well in their job. Some try to have a better understanding of the technologies. So everybody is on a different path. And uh, this, this is where I think uh, such a program is needed, where it categorizes each of these student uh, categories and then brings them all. Uh, now saying that, what are the challenges that students face? So that also I would like to categorize, Sanjeev, because we have got students who think first that DevOps or cloud can be very easy to learn. So change, just learn a few tech stacks and you will get a job. But that's not always the case because when you are learning, see DevOps by itself has got around 10 to 12 essential tool sets and the list is growing forever. AWS, Azure, GCP, they are, you know, they're a whole world in themselves. So, so many different services, so many different uh, aspects, so many considerations, which service to use. Plus you've got now AI, ML, all these coming up. So the first challenge is what to learn. So because if you want to learn everything out, you, you can never do that. Not even the people in AWS, GCP, they, they know about all the services. So the students should first keep a very specific track of what they want to learn and should they be learning a particular tech stack or not. So for example, I'll, I'll give you, uh, uh, we, have, we had a student uh, who was trying to learn everything and then you only have a very specific amount of time to learn, right? So you should be very focused on your learning. I would say that uh, your career path should be defined by what you have done in the past rather than just jumping into a new technology. So for example, if you have been a Linux administrator, if you have been a network engineer, you should not just go and jump into whatever DevOps or technologies come to you first or whatever you think that people are other people are doing try to leverage on your background so if you are a linux or a network administrator you can be a very good sre engineer you can be a very good uh, infrastructure engineer but you will not be a very successful devops engineer per se similarly if you have a very good brainstorming uh, mind where you can think on solutions then you can be a very good cloud architect you can be a very good devops architect you can you can do very well in architecture so leverage on the skills that you have if you are very very good in programming so if you let's say if you have been working on java python for some amount of time that is where you should go for the devops engineer now in saying that it's very ess essential to understand what are the key devops technologies or where these career paths go to so the first one is a devops engineer so if you are doing if you want to become devops engineer or you want to become a cloud architect or you want to become an sre or a cloud engineer you should understand the specifics of the job not all technologies are needed for all the jobs if you want to be a devops engineer 
probably you should have a very fair understanding of the programming languages. So this would suit somebody who has been an application developer for some time, tries and understands what Maven is, what are the different compilation processes of all these different tech stacks. How do you start doing the coding uh, across the multiple applications? So then you can focus on your CI CD on the compilation of these, uh, automate them, uh, build pipelines, do continuous integration, continuous deployments, integrate the various uh, security tools stacks with it. So that is where you are basing your application programming background and then becoming a DevOps engineer. Then there is a second segment of people who have not done programming and who do not want to do that. So in that case, you don't need to go and learn programming from the scratch. You can build on something else. So if you have not done much of Python, not done much of Java, that, that is okay. Then you can focus on another category, which is your cloud engineer or SRE. So if you have done some sort of networking before, if you have come across any security practices earlier, then what you can do is uh, you can go for Terraform, you can go for Docker, you can go for Kubernetes, you can go for all these different tech stacks, which are, though they involve scripting, but they're away from programming. So you can learn more about uh, cloud monitoring, alerting, you can learn more about uh, how the metrics, traces, spans, they work. You can learn more about getting all these different uh, monitoring and uh, implement, how do you implement backwards in the cloud? How do you make your solution more resilient, more scalable? So then that is the job of a cloud engineer. So this can be done without uh, getting a deep expertise in the programming. And the third one, which I said is a cloud architecture. You can be a very good cloud architect if you know which services to use. And in that case, you have to focus on uh, just the cloud uh, cloud part of it, basically. But you need to know. Uh, on a nutshell, each of these jobs need to know a little bit of everything, but just uh, drill and focus on your particular task. See, it's the same, same way as a medical profession. So not all the doctors know everything, right? So for example, if you are a, if you are a heart surgeon, you know more about heart. So, but somebody who is a podiatrist will know more about foot. So it's not like you today you do heart surgery and tomorrow you also perform foot operation. It doesn't work like that. So same thing is specialization in DevOps as well. So you've got multiple specialization. So you focus on your strengths and then you focus on the tech stack, which can give you most leverage. Sometimes you find that people are just trying to change their career as well uh, from, so let's say, uh, they have been doing something else in the job and DevOps is completely different. Some of them are non-IT guys who approach to me uh, that they want to change into DevOps. So you can do that. Uh, so there are, but you have to be a little bit knowledgeable about how software works and then uh, you can go for DevOps. For those students who are worried about what are the next set of technologies, just understand that a specific tool is not really important. The, the most important thing is having a very good foundation. And that is that is what we also teach in the in the program that just just knowing a specific tool is not important because tools keep on changing. So and that is what even the student should understand that tomorrow you have uh, you might have some other security tool, but the fundamentals and the concepts remain the same. So it's very essential to grasp the concept, work on the concept, and rather than chasing a tool and because tools will be ever evolving. So I hope Sanjeev, that question is answered. Yeah, that was good. Uh, in a way you answered a lot of uh, questions, how much of pre programming is needed for different roles, uh, how people uh, can make use, best make use of their previous experience and a lot of other queries. I, I'm sure it would be very helpful. Thank you so much, Saurav. Thank you, Sanjeev.